Welcome into A to Z Sports Prime Time on this Thursday night. Thanks for hanging out here with Bert and myself. We got some draft decisions to talk about because the Titans have one of the most complicated draft decisions of any team in the less than a month away that we have until the NFL draft. Very exciting stuff. Three weeks until we are officially drafting. Well, a little more than three weeks. A little less than a month, a little more than three weeks. Either way, the draft will be upon us in the second to last week of April, and we will have a lot more to dive into then. But in the meantime, we can talk about how the free agency and trade strategy for the Titans has impacted this situation. So we'll work through that uh, over the course of tonight. We will talk about how you think it's impacted their draft plans. And certainly, we will uh, take a look at how Rand Carthon can, conti- can continue, in his own words, to roll the dice and play the board. We always appreciate you guys showing up whenever or wherever it is that you stream this show. If you're hanging out on Twitter, please retweet it in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you're on Facebook Live, you can share, share now to public. That's in the bottom left. And if you're on YouTube or Twitch, You can like the video, you can subscribe to the channel, and tell a friend to do the same. Joey D'Amico is clearly unfamiliar with how the rules work around here when he says, Buck is late once again. The show does not start until I show up, so it's not my fault if you're early, but I'm on time. You just need to be here when I'm here, and I promise that I'll be here at some point, but we don't ever tell you when. We leave ourselves a little wiggle room. I got things going on. It's okay. The thing that I got going on right now is you guys with the primetime show. Let's get it. Welcome into A to Z Sports Prime Time from the Zen Sports Studios. I'm your host, Buck Rising. I'm proud, as always, to be presented to you by the wonderful people at True Math Fitness in the Gulch. Go to truemathfitness.com for your first workout free as a Middle Tennessee resident. No workout ever recycled or repeated. And a special workout. I'm going to be uh, helping Worth Campbell on Saturday, this coming Saturday, Uh, What is the date on that? Is that April, or excuse me, March 29th, I believe it's Saturday. I don't have my calendar in front of me. Either way, this Saturday, we're going to be working out for uh, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. It's a donation-based class. You can go to truemathfitness.com to sign out. Sign up for the Saturday at 10 a.m. workout. I'm going to be there. Uh, Looking forward to seeing a bunch of you guys there. It's a sweat for a cause at True Mav Fitness, so we'll see you Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Of course, Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet, quality American-made Ford vehicles and award-winning customer service is what they offer you. TwoRiversFord.com for more information. And Zen Sports, download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, and get up to $1,000 on your no-danger first wager. ZenSports.com for more information. So, Draft plans. How does the Titans free agent strategy thus far? Obviously, free agency doesn't end, doesn't end for the foreseeable future. But right now, we're through the first wave of free agency. And the Titans, in the process of this, while other teams are signing free agents, have agreed to terms with Legarius Sneed, who's not a free agent, but is a part of this class of players that they are acquiring in the offseason. How does this impact the Titans' draft strategy with seven total selections right now, no third-round pick, a couple of seventh-round picks in this upcoming draft? How do the additions of Calvin Ridley and Legereus Sneed change the Titans' plans at seven? We'll talk about it together on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. Um, We will uh, remind you that your Two Rivers Ford take is presented by Two Rivers Ford, Quality American-made Ford vehicles at the South's most trusted Ford dealership. For over 40 years, they've been putting Middle Tennesseans in the driver's seat. No matter how you like to shop, Two Rivers Ford has you covered. TwoRiversFord.com for more information. And as I said, the South's most trusted Ford dealer. What should the impact of Legereus Sneed and Calvin Ridley be on the Titans' draft plans? Matthew Morton says, I've been hearing a lot of Malik neighbors. I thought for sure we'd go for Joe Alt. So, Malik neighbors, famously LSU wide receiver. Joe Alt, one of the best tackles, regardless of right or left tackle. Looks like Clemson's about to beat Arizona, by the way, in the Sweet 16. A huge upset 
um, right now in that bracket, keeping an eye on these things as we continue to do the primetime show live with you. But Joe Alt from Notre Dame, Malik Neighbors from LSU, seventh overall pick. There's no guarantee that either of them will be there, which is an interesting proposition unto itself. But fair to expect by the time you get to seven that the best tackle prospect is off the board and the best wide receiver prospect is off the board. One would assume that's Marvin Harrison Jr. And for, uh, wow, Clemson just pulled off that upset, 77-72 over Arizona in the regional semifinal, the West regional semifinal of the Sweet 16. That is a huge upset for people's brackets. Arizona could have easily won it all and now instead They get bounced for Clemson to advance to the Elite Eight for the first time since 1980. Huge. Anyway, what do you think of the draft strategy or how the draft strategy is affected by Snead, a top flight corner, and Ridley, who is probably going to be your number one wide receiver statistically or in terms of volume or percentage of uh, passes thrown his way? It's fair to expect that he would be the top option in this passing game, but we'll see how much that changes. Uh, B French says, uh, asking me, is there a big drop off between top two left tackles in this draft? And for some reason it changes into uh, all caps. How big of a difference do you think it is? If so, I'm trying to read it, how he typed it, which is yelling, screaming at me. Um, (laughs) I think that you can get tackles at 13. I think that you can get tackles at 23 It's just a matter of how they have the draft board stacked and how much, I I don't think personally there's a huge drop-off between Ola Fashanu of Penn State and Joe Alt. I do think there's a pretty significant athleticism drop-off between Tyson Fuaga and all of them, um, worth noting. Now, I know he is a right tackle coming out of college, but I think he has the ability to play left. If you hear Greg Cosell's analysis of him, he seems like, the best possible option, the best possible prospect, right or left tackle at the position. If he's not there and Joe Alt is available, you could do a lot worse than Joe Alt. I think Joe Alt's going to be a eight to 10 year pro at the position, and you would love to pick the tackle and not think about it. Jaime says it doesn't matter when we have Callahan, and I assume he's talking about Bill. Well, it does matter. It actually does matter because Bill Callahan should absolutely have a say in what they do at seven, whether they stick and pick with a tackle, whether they're comfortable trading back and you evaluate the uh, the skill set, the raw tools and athleticism of these players. And if Bill Callahan says, yeah, we're comfortable moving back and adding a, another pick to continue to bolster this roster and I can make it work or succeed at a high level with alt instead of uh, Fashanu or let's say a Marius Mims later, potentially a high second round pick, if not bottom of the first round pick, at, I don't know, so you do a deal with Minnesota and you go from 7 to 23, potentially pick up 11. Could you take the tackle at 11? Yes, possibly. Could you take uh, an inside linebacker or an edge player at 23? Absolutely, because you have needs at both that are glaring. I think that it makes a lot of sense to trade out. I don't think that the drop-off between tackles at the, you know, at the outside of the absolute elite tier, and I don't know that we have an absolute elite player out of the tackle prospects, though Fuaga looks like he could be one, it makes the most sense to me to trade out if it's a tackle. If they think that Malik Neighbors is such a unique player that they absolutely have to have him and they stay at seven and take him, not going to be mad at that either because I think you can find uh, a Tyler Guyton at 38, uh, the tackle out of Oklahoma, I think, that you actually, is he Oklahoma State or Oklahoma? I can't remember. I want to say Oklahoma State, actually. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I still have a month to fine-tune my draft analysis, so bear with me. Either way, there are others that you can add that can be perfectly functional to high-level left tackles in the league. They're going to have to play right out right out of the gates, so you don't have the uh, – you don't have – the luxury of kind of letting a player develop, this is going to be, they're going to be right out there immediately, no matter if you take them at 7, 11, 23, or 38. They're going to play from day one because the Titans have zero other options at left tackle beyond Jalen Duncan and NPF that you don't want to see back out there again. Uh, But, you know, it's an interesting discussion for sure to kind of work through. And you see a variety of different places where this, where the Titans free agent and uh, draft or rather trade acquisitions 
have adjusted these things. And I'm going to play for you a clip of Greg Cosell here in just a second, right after I remind you that the primetime program is made possible by the Ashton Real Estate Group of REMAX Advantage, the official real estate agent of the red-hot Nashville Predators, who play at 9 p.m. tonight against Arizona. Don't sell without the intel that you can get at GaryAshton.com. This is Greg Cosell talking about uh, talking about Legereus Snee. Now, the Titans weren't necessarily going to take a corner at seven, though they might have been inclined to take one if they traded back because prior to Snead, they had desperate need uh, at outside corner. This is Greg Cosell talking about what they add in Snead, which makes corner less of a glaring priority. But the, here's the one thing I'll say about Snead, and then we'll leave it alone so we can get into more detail uh, You know, at the install on May 3rd. Um, he brings not only quality play, but he brings a swagger and an attitude. And I think in some ways that can be seen as just as important. So, because he is a press man corner, which doesn't mean he has to play press every snap, but you see him get right in the face of receivers. He's physical, he's aggressive, he's competitive. And, you know, I'll just say this, they've now signed a woozy and Sneed. Uh, so what was a major weakness a year ago is now strength. And the one thing about this league now, the way it's going, is you can't cover up for bad corner play. And now they do not have bad corner play. So think of it this way. If you feel your corners aren't good enough, that shrinks your playbook. When you feel your corners are good and you can play man, that expands your defensive playbook. So we'll leave it at that, but that's really the way it works. Yeah. And we'll so that's Greg Cosell of NFL Films breaking down a little bit of Legereus Need and his impact that the Titans are going to feel. A reminder, you can get your tickets to the install live show. Greg is going to fly in for March the th- or excuse me, May the 3rd at the Hutton Hotel in the Analog Room. We're going to do a deep film dive with you guys and take your questions on Legereus Need, on Calvin Ridley, on who else of the Titans added free agency, Tony Pollard. We'll also do the entirety of the draft class over the course of a three-hour live podcast with you guys in attendance. Bert is going to drop the Eventbrite link in the live stream chat for those of you who have not gotten your tickets. I saw that they sold 10 more last night. Again, they are going very, very quickly. If you do not get your tickets in the links below that Bert is going to drop into the various chats for you on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch, you can go to 1045thezone.com. You can get in the door for $25. You can get a VIP ticket for $75. And also join us for a great night that helps raise money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society uh, because that is what we are going to do the show in benefit of. And we're going to have some special guests as well. We'll announce more of those as we get closer to May the 3rd. But make sure you get your tickets now because as soon as we announce our special guests, They are going to sell out, I can promise you, and you are not going to want to miss this. AZ Sports Primetime is made possible by TrueMath Fitness in the Gulch. Go to TrueMathFitness.com for your first workout free and be there. Speaking of LLS, speaking of leukemia and lymphoma, Saturday at TrueMath Fitness, downtown Nashville in the Gulch at 10 a.m., we are hosting a sweat for a cause with TrueMath, worth Campbell, who is a uh, who's the owner of the gym, who is the lead trainer at TrueMav, and who is a Titans mega fan. Myself and you guys, we're going to be taking donation. It's just, it's the cost of a donation. That's all it costs to come work out with us on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at TrueMav Fitness, downtown Nashville, TrueMavFitness.com for more information. We're going to tweet out the links uh, to that. I will do that from my personal account. We will do that from uh, the A to Z account as well. And uh, shit, Bert, I'm, uh, I may have uh, you drop another link that I'll send to you for the True Mav workout at the end of the show for people who want to get involved with that. It's just the cost of a donation. Whatever you feel comfortable donating to LLS will give you the ability to come work out, sweat for a cause, sweat for a cure on Saturday at TrueMavFitness.com. Should be a great time. Come hang out. It'd be great to meet a lot of you guys in person. Haven't seen you guys in a while since we haven't done a game in a while. So uh, it was always, it's always good to put some uh, some faces to the names in the comment section that we see. I may uh, make Bert do it. I haven't decided yet. We'll uh, we'll find out together. I think that would be funny. Um, can Bert put it in the chat, says Chosen522. Yes, he indeed can. Uh, Bert, if you go to the true man. <laughs> All right. No, Bert, you're not going to argue uh, with them in the comment section. 
Uh, David Kimberly says, you sweat when you eat. Well, you can bring breakfast if you want to. You can sweat and eat uh, while the rest of us work out. But we are going to sweat for a cause. And if your sweating involves whatever it is that you brought for breakfast, uh, hopefully you bring some for the rest of us. Would be a great time. Uh, Jay Thomas says, make him do it. Uh, I will do that, Bert. It's in the it's on the TrueMav Instagram page is where they posted the link to it. So if you could snag that and then drop it in the chat uh, at your convenience, that would be greatly helpful because we want people to experience TrueMav and also we want people to donate for a good cause. So Bert will do that momentarily. Uh, David Allen says, thank you for doing these shows. I usually drop out to focus on other sports, but you keep the Titans interesting. Well, listen, they're interesting. I, I'm not doing shit. I just show up and talk about the football team. They are legitimately interesting right now. So, um, you know, if I can be a, if I can be a facilitator for you guys to talk uh, in the offseason about your favorite uh, football team, then certainly we're happy to do that. But they have they have definitely kept it interesting for for all of us this offseason, myself included. For, so for that, we are grateful. Uh, so let us move on and let us talk about what else the Titans have yet to do in the comments on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. Is there a defensive player that you would be comfortable taking in the first round? We've talked so much about tackles. We've talked about Brock Bowers. We've talked about wide receivers. Is there a defensive player? It can be at seven. It can be later. You can pose a hypothetical trade. Do you think that there is a defensive player that you would be comfortable adding in round one? We will discuss at length together right after I remind you that the primetime program is presented by Zen Sports. Download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, get up to $1,000 on your No Danger First wager. They also offer you 10 same game parlays on both the NHL and the NBA. 10 same game parlays that are boosted for you each and every night. So you can take advantage of Zen Sports. Plug in that promo code ATOZTN that you see over my left shoulder. Terms and conditions do apply. Gambling problem called the Tennessee Red Line, 1-800-889-9789. Must be 21 and up in the state of Tennessee to bet at Zen Sportsbook. Is there a defensive player that you would be comfortable taking at all? Puka says, Mama Mia! No, no, no. She says, no defense, only offense. That's the thing that she wants. David Kimberly says, bruh, all you talk about is your sponsors. No shit, David. They make this thing free for you. Uh, they make sure that I get paid. So, of course, we talk about the sponsors. The show is entirely done because of sponsorship uh, that exists. So, you should be thanking your lucky stars for Zen Sports, True Map Fitness, Two Rivers Ford, and the Ashton Real Estate Group. Because, again, all of this shit is free for you because of them. Um, because I don't work for free. Dallas, Dallas Turner, says Boss Man Jim, is who he is comfortable with in the first round. Levi Fouts said Dallas Turner is the only one. So, I'm partial to Jared Verse. I, honestly, on a list of what I think, that, and I don't know for sure what the Titans defense is going to look like. Obviously, none of us will know until they get out there probably with a, you know the first month of the season, we can start to kind of figure out what their tendencies are going to be. We know they're going to be aggressive. We know that they're going to build this thing, as they have done so far through free agency, from back to front. We know that they have considerable work to do next to Jeffrey Simmons and Harold Landry because Arden Key, honestly, is a situational pass rusher at best to date, or at least that's all he's proven to be. Could he potentially take another step in 2024? I'm not going to rule it out. I enjoy Arden. I hope that he becomes as good a football player as he is a quote. But at this point, I think that Jared first, and honestly, Leatu Latu, and I hope that I said his uh, first name correctly, Latu may be my favorite pass rusher in the draft class, my favorite edge rusher in the draft class, after Greg Cosell kind of moved me off Dallas Turner. Not that Dallas Turner isn't great. Not that a team isn't going to fall in love with Dallas Turner. Not that he's not going to be a first-round pick. But there are some things about Latu's size, about his burst, about his bend, that Dallas Turner doesn't necessarily have all of those tools. He's a more refined pass rusher that I think can continue to improve. He got through college after he was forced to medically retire with a neck issue, but since then has been completely fine. Latu may be my favorite edge guy in the class. 
I think I would only, the only scenario that I would be comfortable taking a defensive player in is if they traded back. I don't think there's one that I'd go for at seven. I don't think, I think Jared Verse is going to be a nice player. I don't know that I would take him at seven. Um, but again, if you traded out of seven, say, let's just say you somehow maneuvered a deal where you got both the Minnesota Vikings first round picks uh, for your seventh overall. And maybe there's an additional pick that's tossed into the mix there. Uh, to send Minnesota's way because they're going to want to trade up for a quarterback. They're going to be one of three teams, at least, that's going to be interested in trading up for a quarterback, including Las Vegas. I think that for 11 and 23, let's say, you could get a tackle at 11. You could get Junior Colson potentially, the inside linebacker at 23, and address the green dot inside linebacking need that you have. That could be a core foundational piece for your defense. For years to come, you could take Jared Verse. I don't think Latu or Turner is going to be there at 23, but there are some interesting pieces that I would absolutely be on board with them adding. They could stand probably to add two. They need wide receiver help still. They need tackle help still, but the, there is no question that after left tackle, the most pressing need that the Titans have right now is defensive line. I don't think most people would do that word association with them. Uh, Cosell wasn't all in on Joe Alt either. I don't think you have to be all in or all out on a player. I just think that you can point out, and I think Cosell's criticisms of Joe Alt were completely fair. He may not be the best, and it's, you know, it's based on personal analysis or personal evaluation. Greg is a one-man scouting service. NFL teams have entire, you know, staffs devoted to this stuff. So there may be, there will be differences in opinion. And it doesn't mean that Joe Alt can't go on to be a phenomenal left tackle in football. There's just some things on the tape that Greg pointed out that are not overwhelmingly great traits and that if he doesn't get corrected can be reasons that you get beat at the next level. That can be said of any player in this upcoming draft class. Um, Terry Lynn says, trade with the Vikings, draft Bowers. Bowers is going to be one of the more compelling cases in all of this because I think it very much depends. How high he goes depends on the team that that is there on the board. I know that sounds pretty simplistic to say, but he's going to be more specific to fit, I think, rather than make sense for every team. Although I do think a player like Brock Bowers makes sense for every team that doesn't have, you know, an obvious full-time starter at the tight end position. And, and there's not that many of those guys. I mean, Kittle's getting up there in age. Uh, certainly Kelsey is towards the end of his career. Uh, God help you if you let the Chiefs somehow land uh, Brock Bowers. That would be a nightmare scenario with Hollywood Brown and Brock Bowers and Travis Kelsey at the end of his career, but it's possible. We know that the Titans are probably going to go offense, almost assuredly are going to go offense, but the trade back scenario does make for at least an interesting discussion. I do think that if the right wide receiver is there at seven, that they would take him, though of course, the thing that we're going to continue to come back time and time again is how long can they afford to put off finding their left tackle? This was something that Brian Callahan talked with me about on the radio show up at the Combine just, uh, what, about a month ago. A couple of years ago in Cincinnati, you guys had offensive line needs. You guys had wide receiver needs, similar to the situation with the Titans, and ultimately Jamar Chase was the pick. Turned out pretty good player. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good player. Pretty good player. But Benet Sewell sitting there as well. What was kind of the, the dialogue for you guys as a staff? Because, you know, I imagine there's going to be similar discourse around yeah. the offensive line prospects and wide receivers in this draft. You know, one, one of the things I've always said when, when asked about this debate is um, – I, I had landed at some point in my career, usually in, in Denver is usually what I liken back to, and we had uh, Demarius Thomas, uh, Wes Welker, Julius Thomas, and uh, Emmanuel Sanders. Obviously, we had a great quarterback that was at, at the end of his career, um, but those guys in one-on-one -on -one situations could win uh, when you needed them to win in a, in a tight moment at the end of a game, all those things. And so I've always that's always resonated with me. And when we had a chance to pick a player like Jamar, um, I always just thought back to what that offense looked like, and that was sort of the vision of what we were trying to look like in Cincinnati with an elite quarterback, elite processor, um, to find guys that could go in and separate. And the debate was always, well, you got to protect the quarterback, obviously, or you can't throw the ball. And we didn't necessarily believe that. We felt like if you got great players on the perimeter – the, they can go win versus press coverage and all the teams that are trying to condense everything and rush the passer uh, if you can win quick you can throw quick um, so that was our philosophy in that moment obviously Jamar Chase coming out premier player 
Uh, there was no doubt that he was going to be an all-pro player. There was no doubt that Panay Sewell was going to be an all-pro style tackle. There was no question on either one of those players, right. um, their talent level and how they would fit in the NFL. I think that's unique. I don't know that you're ever going to get in a spot where sure. both, both of those guys different year are, are that caliber of player where there's going to be one that's going to be better than the other, and, and that sort of makes a decision for you at the end of the day. But um, I've always felt like today's offenses, I think you still have to protect the quarterback, um, but but to score points, you got to have guys that can score points. And um, I've always felt that. I've always believed that. That doesn't mean that that's we're just going to automatically take a receiver. Uh, hey, you're giving people chest tightness, yeah, Brian. No, it doesn't, it, I don't mean to say that. I'm just philosophically I've always felt like the, the better, more, more talented receivers you have, the better chance you have to score points. Um, but So that's a portion, again, from my conversation at the Combine with Brian Callahan. You can check that full interview out at 104.5 The Zone's YouTube page. All right, a quick weekend bounce back, and then we'll get you guys out of here. Who needs to bounce back in sports this week? And there is no question, if you've been following sports at all, the answer is Shohei Otani. Shohei, just to be in Dodger Stadium, it's obviously not your first opening day, but to have it here in the stadium, what was that experience like? ジャースタジアムの初体験として導入印象でしたかと。ま、あの、ファンの人も多くあの入ってもらって、あの、敵のこ時はね、あの、声ですけど、味方の時はとても心強く、あの、素晴らしい戦をいただいてありがたかったな
fair to assume that the translator would have gotten from Shohei Otani. So it's very, very skeptical of uh, what's going on. It couldn't possibly come at a worse time for the Dodgers and for Shohei, who was getting ready to begin his Dodgers career and is hoping to do it with, uh, you know, with the best franchise in baseball right now to go win a championship. And instead, he's starting his season off with a massive federal investigation into his gambling practices. Crazy stuff. Uh, that's going to do it for us tonight. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us on the primetime program. We're going to preview the Vol Sweet 16 matchup with Creighton tomorrow. Ron Slay is going to be in studio. We'll have a great time. We'll talk a little bit more about the Titans and their draft strategy. We'll get into your phone calls as well. Make sure you're hanging out with us from 10 to 1 on 104.5 The Zone. Make sure you get your tickets for the install on May the 3rd. Make sure you get uh, signed up for the True Mav Fitness class to sweat for a cause on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Bert dropped the links in there. Chosen says, you going for the Vols? I'm going for what's best for the show. What's best for the radio show is the Vols winning. So I'm 100% on board with Tennessee, winning it all. I need as much things to talk about that will keep me from doing a month more of draft hypotheticals because that shit is boring. And real basketball, college basketball, a team that is successful in college basketball with local ties would be excellent. So, yes, I would like that to uh, to be uh, the case. Uh, G. Sully says, cop out answer, Buck. I want passion. You can guarantee that the thing that I'm most passionate about forever and always is my bank account, and the success of the various shows that I host. You will never get more passion from me on any subject than those two things. And those two things are directly benefited from Tennessee continuing. So I'm all for Rocky Top, baby. Take me to the ship, Rick Barnes, even though, you know, his record would say that that's probably not the case. We'll see if they get past Creighton tomorrow. It's going to be in the middle of the night. That's unfortunate. Anyway, have a great rest of your evening. Uh, have a great weekend. No Sunday primetime because of Easter, uh, for those of you who celebrate. Hope you have a happy Easter, and I will talk to you next on Friday morning on 104.5 The Zone. See you guys.